Hey guys, William Justice here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. Today we're going to be kind of doing a little bit more of an experimental video. I'm going to be trying a few things out. We're going to be doing some 3D and trying to create kind of an orbit effect so we can have things spinning around objects, um, like we can have something spinning around my head right now. To do this, we're going to do a little bit of masking, bring the 2D video into 3D, and put a 3D shape spinning around my head or whatever we put in. We're going to have like a flat image plane in 2D, and we're going to put something that spins and orbits around it. So in front you'll be able to see it, and when it goes behind it, it'll be gone. You won't be able to see it at all. I also want to take the opportunity to experiment with the relight effect. And I'm going to apply it to my face to try to have a light kind of follow the objects as they go around my face. We'll put a little glow on it and see if we can make that interesting. If you're enjoying my videos and want to learn more about uh, Fusion, Resolve, and making videos, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. Also, comment below. I'd really like to hear what you think. If you have any ideas, suggestions, or feedback, I um, always love hearing from you. All right, let's take a look at how to create these kind of orbit effects. Okay, let's set up the orbit animation. We're going to put something and have it go around my head. Um, I have a clip of myself talking right here. We're going to right click on it and choose new fusion clip. Let's click the button at the bottom to go into fusion. Let's set up a 3D shape right around where my head is. In the toolbar, click the um, shape icon and drag that in. These are the uh, 3D elements. With shape 3D selected, we're going to hit the merge option and then we're going to hit render. For this um, animation, we don't need a camera or lights or anything like that. We're going to take the output of the 3D render and put it right on top of the output of media in one, and that's going to create a merge node. And there's our shape. Let's, uh, I'm going to hit uh, merge 3D and hit one so we can see the shape in the viewer. For this animation, we're going to use a cylinder so it will spin around my head. So click the shape 3D and change the type to cylinder. Now it's really big, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the radius in. Let's zoom out a little bit. There's our cylinder. And we're going to take the height down and the radius down again. Something around in there. And then we're going to go to the transform option and we're going to take the Y coordinate and we're going to shift it up so it kind of covers where my head is and we'll shift it over a little bit. So you can see there's the object in 3D. It's being rendered and then placed back on top. So let's put a background into the shape. We're going to start with a background node and we're going to put this into the green input. So this is the material and the background is black. Okay, so we have a, the black cylinder sitting on top of my head and we're going to put some text. So let's take the text and uh, we're going to take the text and merge it into the background. And let's set the text up to be, call it a wrap text. Because we're going to have this text wrap around my head. And to move the text, we're going to add a transform node. So there's a transform node right before the shape node. And we're going to be able to use this transform node to easily move the text around. Now you can see it's wrapping there, but we only have part of it. And we get the transform and you can see it's, it's wrapping around and you can see the back of it. As we shift the background, it's going off the screen right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the transform and we're going to set the edges to wrap. And this means that uh, we can keep shifting it and the text will keep coming through. It's just being repeated through the animation. So you can see there we just have that now the text is just going to keep repeating around the cylinder. We can kind of keep sliding it as much as we want. Okay, let's go back to the output here. And we're going to take this background node and slide the alpha down a little bit. And you see as we move the text, it's not going behind my head. It, the text is staying in front of my head because the 3D object is being placed on top of the media. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this up just a little bit. And we're going to use an image plane. So we can take the image plane right here. And this takes a flat image and puts it into the 3D space. So let's go out of the media in one into the image plane. And we're going to take the image plane and put it into the merge 3D. You notice that it's a little bit smaller. So we need to adjust the size. We'll uh, bring it up just a touch and kind of see what's going on right there. And when we look at this, you'll see that the text is in front and behind. So as we use the transform and move the text position, it's going to slide around back behind this image plane and we're not going to see it until it comes back in front of it. But we don't want it to wrap around the whole image plane. We only want it to wrap around my head. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of masking. Um, so right in front of media one, we're going to add a magic mask. We're going to take the output of the media in and put it into the magic mask and we're going to take the magic mask and go into the image plane. Okay, on the first frame, let's just draw a line on the part we want to mask out. It kind of, that's, that looks pretty good. Now we just need to hit this track forward button and it's going to do the masking for each of the frames in this video. 
Okay, the tracking is complete. And you'll see here that when we look at this, now we just have the picture of my head in there with the cylinder wrapping around it. So now let's go to the final output here. And you'll see it's too small. So let's take the image plane and we're gonna go to transform and let's bring the size up to where it kind of matches. It just needs to be pretty close right in there. Now let's go to the transform and adjust the position of the text. And you'll see it wraps around and it goes behind my head. With the back, so I left the background on there just so you kind of see how it's set up. But let's go ahead and take the background alpha all the way down. And now we just have the text going around my head. Now the text is warped a little bit. If you go to the shape, um, go to the controls, um, you see if we just the height of the shape, it, it adjusts there. So um, it's also possible to take go to the text and go to the shading and size. Maybe we want to bump up the Y because it's a little squished. Um, so depending on the shape, um, the text may get distorted a little bit. Anyway, so there we have a some basic text wrapping around there. Now the next thing here is, let's say we wanted to apply an effect onto the text, maybe add a glow. So let's click on the render and hit um, control space and type in soft glow. Okay, we got a problem there because it's not glowing the text, it's glowing everything coming out of the render. Um, this is where I did a little trick that kind of helped out here. So um, let's, let's take a look at the glow. Maybe we want it to be kind of a, some green text green glowy text. All right, that's not looking too good. Okay, so um, the soft glow is affecting everything that's coming out of the render 3D. So everything that's in the 3D space is get, having the effect applied to it. So what I did is outside the magic mask, I added a color corrector and I took the gain and brought it all the way down. And that took the image plane and everything that's coming out of the magic mask is now black. You can see over here. Now all we need to do is adjust the blending mode to screen and it's going to filter out all the black and only show the non-black elements of the render 3D. So now we can have glowing text that's spinning around my head. Okay, let me show you how I put the, uh, the lines around my head real quick. So let's take a fast noise, and we're going to take the fast noise and put it into the merge. And that's going to put the fast noise in that cylinder. We'll turn off the soft glow temporarily. And what I'm going to do is just set up a quick gradient. So with the fast noise selected, go to Color, choose Gradient and gradient style linear. And we can take these, let's put the fast noise in viewer one. We can set the range for the gradient with this line. Move it pretty close together. And then we're gonna go down and set it to ping pong. So it's gonna take this gradient and repeat it. We'll take the black option and bring it over so we just have to have a thin white line. And we'll take on the black, we'll, we're gonna, we don't have to do this, but we're gonna set the alpha all the way down and make these a little closer together. Go to noise and we'll bring the detail down and we got some pretty straight lines here. And once we have these lines set up, then you can use the transform. Let's go ahead and turn the glow back on. And you can use the transform to adjust the Y, it'll go up and down. And you can also adjust the X position and it'll kind of um, spin around right there. You notice that there's a crease right here in the back. Um, so what you can do is you can take that crease and put it behind the head and then it'll kind of hide it a little bit. And again, we can take the fast noise and adjust it to make these lines bigger or smaller. All right, one more thing. I'm gonna um, do a quick animation and then we're gonna use the, the relight effect to kind of have the glowing show up across my face. Let's do a um, S rectangle. We're gonna use the shape nodes. I'm gonna set this up really quick. Pretty small, corner radius, and we're gonna have a S render. That's gonna render the shape and we're gonna take that and put it into the merge. And we already got a little glowy rectangle there. Same thing applies, we can use the transform to spin it around my head. And we're gonna do, um, we're gonna use the duplicate node. And we're gonna make, um, let's see, make three copies and we're gonna move them along the X here. And we're gonna make the size go down on each one. And so let's take a look at what we have in the media out here. So something like that, we're gonna have this going around my head and we're gonna put a green light on my face. Um, one of the things I did is I went to the, in the, in the intro I went to the shape and the transform, and I adjusted the rotation a little bit like that, so that when we move it, it's kind of going diagonally around. Okay, so let's add let's add the relight effect. Okay, so here's here's relight. So we're going to take the media out and put it into the relight effect, and we're going to take a look at that in the first viewer. You see, as we move the light, you're going to be able to see how the shadows work. This is how intense it is right here. And this is the position. So you can see the light coming from the top left. And then we move over here and it's coming from the bottom right. And you can see the shadows are the darker areas. So we well, can kind of think about this as like a mask. 
Any parts that are white are going to have an effect applied. Any parts that are darker are not. Okay, so after the merge one, let's add a color corrector. Put it right in there. And we're going to make it green. So this is going to be our kind of a green light. Obviously, we don't want the whole animation to be green. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this relight effect and we're going to put this into the mask on the color corrector. Okay, you notice it didn't do anything. And that's because the masking for nodes defaults to working off of alpha. So all we need to do is go to settings. So for the channel, let's choose luminance. And you can see right there, it's only, sh the effect is being applied in the lighter areas of the screen. So now we can take this light and move it from this side of my face to the other side of my face. And you'll see that right here, the effect is applying and on the opposite side where the shadows are, it's not gonna apply as much. Um, and you can adjust the, there's all sorts of settings in here where you can adjust the brightness, the reach is how far the effect applies. You can see that more area, less areas. So when we bring the reach down, it's only going to affect the area that's closer to the source. Let's animate the lines and the relight effect. So what we're going to do is when the lines are over here, we're going to want the relight to be right in this position where it's right lighting up the, um, the right side of my face. And when the lines rotate around to the other side, like right around in here, we want the relight effect to move and light up the left side of my face, right like that. Hopefully it makes it a little more realistic. So first thing, first step to do is animate the line. So let's go to the transform. We're gonna go to the, go to the first frame and we'll reset the animation. And we're gonna keyframe the center position. Let's go to the last keyframe and we're gonna spin it around my head a few times. So with the relight effect, it runs pretty slow. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to disable that so you can, we can see what the animation looks like. So let's animate the relight position now that we have the lines animating. Let's go to when they're on the, uh, the right side of my face. We're going to go to, we, let's go ahead and enable the relight. And we're going to move the position to right in here. And we're going to go to the, let's click light position, set some keyframes on the light position. And we're going to play the animation out till the lines go to the other side of my face. And we're going to take the light position and move it over to the other side. You see the light shifts on that side. Now we did this once. We just want this to repeat. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the spline editor, open up all the light sources, select them all, the keyframes here. I'm going to say set ping pong. So basically it's just going to keep toggling back and forth and the light is going to follow the lines. Now the one thing is you'll see that when when the lines go behind my head, the light's still following it and it's lighting up my face while the lines are behind my head. We don't want this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the first place where the lines go behind my head. So they're starting to go behind my head right, right around in here. And we're going to go to the color corrector, click on settings, and we're gonna take the blend and bring it all the way down, or at least down a little bit right in here. We're gonna set a keyframe, and we'll go back to the first frame and we'll Bring the blend all the way up and go to right right here we're going to set another keyframe so that the the blend is way down while it's behind my head and then when it gets to be in the front of my head we're going to take the blend and bring it back up so that kind of the light is strongest right where it's in the front once you have that set up you can go to the spline editor select the frames and do the same thing we can just get it to uh, ping pong um, using the spline editor you can get this to repeat so that it dims while it's behind my head and then gets stronger when it's in the front Okay, those are just a few basics of uh, how to do some orbiting effects using 3D and taking um, flat images and bringing it into the 3D space and having 3D um, animations go around um, the flat images. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, please let me know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, like I said, this was just a real quick experiment to see a few different things that we can do. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. You can also go to my website, buildjustice.com. I have lots of effects and plugins and things on the website you can download and try out.